morning. They went inside, is the shout inside. They shout inside. Hallelujah. I say your story will change because the kindness of God will raise a voice for you around the corridor of power. The kindness of God will raise a voice for you in the palace that matter to the glory of your destiny. You will never be stranded. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Lord, I need one word from you this morning that will change my story. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. One word from you. One word from you, Jesus. One word from you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, take over this service. Let the word of God come with power. Let it heal. Let it deliver the oppressed. Let it terminate every form of misfortune. Above all, let it move people from one level of glory to another level. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you believe, let your amen show it. Look at your neighbor and ask him or her neighbor. Is life getting better and sweeter for you and your family? I mean on a daily basis. What did he say? But neighbor, look at me. As for me and my family, on a daily basis, life is getting better and sweeter. By the word of the Lord. Get said this morning. The word of God is coming towards your direction. It will locate you. And change your story. Give you a better and a sweeter life. However. My own better and sweeter life. Is going to be greater than yours. Is he still happy with you? Don't bother. Just put your hands together for the Lord. And have your seat in God's presence. Hear me, people of God, nothing guarantees a better life and a sweeter life like a genuine encounter with the word of God. Am I not clear? Nothing guarantees a better life and a sweeter life other than a genuine encounter with the word of God. Because everything about your life today and tomorrow and forever is domicile in the word of God. And that is why no one play careless with the word of God ever amount to anything in life, sir. Am I talking to somebody? It is by the word of God, by the word of God, that a man can suddenly become a wonder to his world. Remember that prophetically this month, God summoned the apostle over this great commission. As Declare this month for us as I am a wonder to my world. I'm not a wanderer in this world. I'm what? A wonder to my what? To my world. Praise the living Jesus. Last Sunday we started a teaching series for our Sunday services. That is caption operating in the supernatural. Operating in the supernatural. In this first service, we shall be looking at part 2A. I'd like for you to have an understanding that the kingdom of God on earth is the only kingdom where the son of nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody, but not without genuine salvation that is coupled with understanding of the mystery of redemption. Christianity has been reduced to religion today. And that is why 
you see the drive of people towards the things of God declining on a daily basis. It's declining. Everybody is just looking for a shortcut, not knowing that anything you get by church courts are, may end up cutting your life short. God knew the journey to Canaan land. He knew the two avenue road map that the children of Israel can follow. But he took them through a longer journey. To, took them through what? A longer journey. He would have taken them through the Canaan land, I mean, through the Philistines way, but he did not allow them to go through that. He took them through the wilderness where they will, be, where they will encounter the Red Sea. Am I talking? But you see, there is nothing about your life and my life that is hidden from the Almighty God. We are always in a hurry to make it big because of the compet competition mentality. Comparison mentality, sir. When it is your turn, God will turn to you. And when God turns to you, everything that is not of God will be over. And today I speak by prophecy that God's kindness will show forth in your very life. That your amen is too cold. Nobody can ever rise beyond the knowledge and understanding of the mystery of redemption. And this is where we get stuck. Every limitation that you and I were expect, experiencing in any area of life is as a result of the knowledge and the understanding we, know, we have about redemption. Now come to think of it. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 we are told. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 13 we are told. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness. He is not going to deliver us. We are already what? Delivered. And he did not just deliver us to abandon us there sir. And we are told there that and has translated us into where? The kingdom of his dear son. To the kingdom of his what? Dear son. And uh, if you get to have an understanding of the kingdom of his dear son, it's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of what? Light. If you read 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 9, but he has chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of where again? Out of darkness into what is what? Marvelous light. If in the broad daylight you are afraid that something is wrong, that is no longer fear. It is called the spirit of fear. Am I talking, sir? Right? Because you can see everything clearly. So there shouldn't be anything that will make you to be afraid. So any area of your life that you are still being tormented with the spirit of fear is that area of life that the light of the word of God is not yet enough in your life. When light comes, dominion becomes easy. Am I talking to somebody? So we must understand, people of God, this morning, that the supernatural is at the very root of redemption. Now, in the world, we know that we are not the same. That's in the world over. Just like people will say that fingers are not equal. Am I talking to somebody? And so, when you look at the people in the war system, you see differences. Am I talking to somebody? Anyone that is above the other, he knows something that the other does not know. That is in the world. He's doing something. He's pressing a button. 
that the other person is not pressing, sir. Whether by diabolical means or by any, anything. Or mental knowledge. But in this kingdom also too, I discover also that, that people have been born again so many years and they are still like they are in the kindergarten. Am I talking? Because they are not moving forward. They are not going backward. But they are on the same spot in a particular area of their life. Is that what God expects for people? No. Because the scripture can not be broken. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. He said the path of the just is as a shining light that shine them more and more unto what? The perfect day. The path of the just is as a shining light. Please understand, I and the children that the Lord has given unto me, we are for what? Oh! We are not for sign. We are not for wandering about. We are for signs and what? Wonders. We are not to be running after signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are to be following after us. That is what the scripture says. That is what the scripture says. You remember when Jesus came suddenly and began to manifest the power of God and his name and his fame began to spread. Suddenly, a ruler in the synagogue, a teacher of the law, came by night to see him. Why did he come to see Jesus? That's in John chapter 3. He came by night because he knew that any rabbi that goes to any, any uh, what is called ruler of the Jews that goes and identifies with Jesus will be excommunicated from the church, from the temple, from the synagogue. So he had to come by night because there is something on about him that a question in his heart that he cannot really answer. Is this man the same with us? Is he the same word of God that we are preaching that this man is actually preaching? Why is it that he's commanding exploit and we are being exploited also, always? So he came by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from where? From God, we know. We can't hide it. We know we cannot hide this thing. This is nothing. We know it. This is knowledge by experience. Experiential knowledge. We know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be what? With him. No man can really operate in the supernatural the way you are doing it except God is with that person. What is your secret? And Jesus answered and said unto him to start with. Verily, verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see. Now hear me. Seeing the kingdom of God is not the same as you experiencing the things that are in the kingdom of God. Seeing the kingdom of God is not the same thing as you experiencing the goodies that are in the presence of God, in the kingdom of God. You remember all that left Egypt for Canaan land, virtually all of them died except for Joshua and what? Caleb. Everyone died in the wilderness except the younger generation that eventually went there. And uh, when the time for Moses to die came, God took him to a mountain and uh, asked him to look at where you have missed 
just because of single disobedience. Just like what God servant, the apostle of the Great Commission, was telling us during the empowerment summit. Non comply. It's not just enough for you to have access to the things of God, but you must be able to comply. You must be able to align yourself to the demands of it. God said to Moses, Stretch forth your hand, your rod, to the rock, and water will come out. And Moses, because he allowed himself to be provoked by the children of Israel, and then he thought God would do the same thing the same way. No. He just carried the rock and did what? Smote the rock. And he didn't know that it was not the same rock that he smote in the first time. It was Jesus. It was Jesus that is most. He most the his creator. And God could not pardon that. Is somebody hearing me now? Because he did not believe as it were. He thought only by striking the rock. That is when water will come out. Even though water still came out. But God said, because you did not honor me before the people. You will see the land. You will not enter. Quite a number of us, we have seen a glimpse of this kingdom. But only minute, insignificant few have been able to gain access into it. And that is the reason why too many of us, we are still struggling. We are still complaining and murmuring. Instead of us, to settle down and be able to get to know what it takes her to begin to walk in the realm of the supernatural. We basically get, we get, we continue to complain, we continue to murmur here and there. All the things that does not concern us in church, that is what we bother ourselves with. That is what we bother. Now, what, when Jesus was in the book of John, when Jesus was about to Leave after his resurrection. Peter, they were asking him. He said, what will happen to this person that could survive? He said, what is your business about that? Face your own business. Just follow me. Don't bother about that time. He, in, in Acts chapter, 12, chapter, two, chapter 1 also too. They asked him, when is the season and time that there will be resurrection? Jesus told them that. He said, it is not in, your, it's not in the power of anybody to know. You face what I'm telling you. Forget about others. When you get it right, sir, hear this. Kings will look for you. Kings will do what? They will look for you. Don't you see how many policemen went to Canaan land and they were never given opportunity to stand on the altar to even say greeting. They went. Some went Nicodemusly. And some went openly. But they were not given the relevance or the opportunity to address anybody. Am I talking to somebody? I like for us to wake up, people of God, sir. Never allow your condition to put your back on the ground, sir. Your condition is not your portion in Christ. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, it's only a passage. Everybody that ever got to the topmost top, they went through their own condition and they came out of it and shared testimony. You will testify. Yeah. Oh, that your amen is so cool. Yeah. I say you will testify. Yeah. This day will not be over. In this enough is enough service. Today will not be over until you have a testimony to share. Yeah. If you believe, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. And Jesus said to him, it's not just confessing about, it's not just confessing Jesus as your Lord and your Savior that matters. He said, except you be born of the Spirit and of the water, you cannot enter into the kingdom. He said, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of what? Water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You've got to have an understanding what that one means. He talks about water baptism and he talks about the Holy Ghost baptism. Quite a number of people went through water baptism without understanding. 
Some, they were sprinkled water upon. And they said, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, you are already baptized. That is not the order. And some who really went to be baptized by immersion, they were carried away by the cameraman that would snap them when they are deep into water. They didn't have understanding of what water baptism is all about. Because I don't see any reason why you should go into that water baptism with understanding. Am I talking to somebody? Why you should go into that pool with understanding that you will go there with HIV virus and that that HIV virus will come out with you. It's not possible, sir. It's not what? You don't need anybody, sir. I have seen it over and over again, sir. A young lady, 2005, was so committed. All this is everywhere in the church. Bed, advanced, mature, single. Mature, single. Very mature. Nobody was talking to her. With all her commitment in church, one day, she came to my office and said, Sir, I think God is asking me to go for water baptism. I said, you better go if God is asking to go for water baptism again. This is somebody that everybody knows in church. So, in our own heart of heart, if I go there, won't people think that I've committed sin? So, she mixed up with the teachers and was gisting with them when the time for water baptism came. She joined them and quickly got baptized and left. And then she came back to her and said, you didn't do it. Tell me what you gain. I said, you must go back. Do the right thing. The right way. And then she went for it again. This right way. And guess what? The following day, a brother that they have been in the same unit together, suddenly the veil of covering. Because the face of this lady... It has always been presented to everybody as a, an old woman, a shirt of this grand woman. So nobody wants to go there. But suddenly, the following day, after that water baptism, the brother opened up. Who will ever say because of ordinary water baptism? Now hear me, to the mature single, uh, next week Sunday, 15th of what? Of September by 4 p.m. at Good Shepherd's Hotel. We're going to be having a special mature singles forum relationship seminar. The theme is nothing missing, nothing broken. And the host of that program is no any other person other than Mommy Ben Andrew. Are you excited about that? <laughs> Some will see not go there. Uh -huh, because they have been looking for a pastor that will be pouring oil. That the oil that will not work. The story that I was sharing. She ended up becoming. Okay. The man that got wedded to her. Eventually got enlisted as a pastor in this ministry. I have seen people with HIV without telling anybody went through water baptism knowing fully well that those that went, the Egyptian that follow, the chariots, the what is it called? Pharaoh and his chariots and the Egyptian, the army of Egypt that followed them into the water, sir. They were drowned in the Red Sea. Look, hear this. Nothing contrary will be able to su uh, survive in your life and around your life when you truly go through it with understanding. Most often that the thing that we do, even the anointing you are claiming that, hey pastor, you have not a pastor pray for you, go in peace. He said, pastor, you have not anointed me. You don't even have the understanding of the anointing. You don't even have the understanding of the of the mission of the Holy Communion. And that is why this powerful mission of the kingdom, that's why it appears that they are no longer working, sir. They are still working because your knowledge of them is still, is obsolete. Supernatural. Supernatural. A man that will operate in the supernatural must come into consciousness by knowledge and understanding of what redemption is all about. The Zoe life that you receive just like the choir sang it has placed you above the system of this water. 
It has placed you above, sir. And if indeed it has placed you above, your mental structure must be renewed to that effect. Not just singing it, sir. Not just what? Singing it, sir. Not just what? Singing it. When a believer disregards the place of the supernatural, he becomes vulnerable to all life situations and circumstances. Hear me? Our carelessness, our careless disregard for the supernatural is essentially the reason why the children of God are victims of life circumstances, thereby living a beggarly life and pitiable life in the world that belongs to their father. Who created heaven and NASA? Who created it? Who created it? Who owns everything inside of it? Why you should you now be begging, sir? Won't it surprise you if you see the son of the governor of this state begging on the street? Eh? You will know that something is wrong somewhere. Maybe. Is living in disobedience to his father's instructions, sir. Am I talking? Or you suddenly see the son of the president of Nigeria begging, putting it on social media, help, oh, I'm raising funds to travel abroad for surgery. You will know that that one may be a scammer. He cannot be an authentic, a genuine son of the father, sir. If you read Psalm 24, verse 1, Psalm 24, verse 1, it is, it said, the earth is what? Is the who? Is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to your father. Why should you be a mockery in the mouth of unbelievers? Don't you hear what the scripture says in Psalm 126, verse 1? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the hidden, before we begin to testify, they started testifying on our behalf because they can see. They know when we are living in the face me, I slap you room. And suddenly, I now own not just one duplex, I own an estate. Abba. Gospel will be sweet to preach. Eh? It will be sweet to preach. When you go back to that neighborhood, where the landlady humiliated you, where the landlady's daughter pour water on you early in the morning, insulting your person, by the time you go back to that place in your multiplied dimensions, Habba, they will come kneeling down for you. Eh? Am I talking to somebody? I'd like for you to wake up there for then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with, then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are up. We are glad. Beginning from today, no more sorrow of heart for you. Amen. What is a miracle? A miracle. What is a miracle? What is a miracle? Please have this understanding. Miracles are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the faith of men. Miracles are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the faith of men. If you read from the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 4 to 48, we saw the story of Jairus going to meet with Jesus. Asking Jesus to come and heal her only daughter because she was almost dying before she left home. And Jesus agreed because he was a ruler in the synagogue. Followed him. And while he was going, sir, that is the case of another woman who was already dying for 12 solid years. No solution to her problem, sir. And all the physicians of their days, including the native doctor, they have collected all she ever labored for, sir. Am I talking to somebody? And neither could her case, the issue of her case, could it be resolved? But she came behind because she already said, according to Mark, 
version of it. Because she already said in her heart, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made what? Whole. So she came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately, it's a cash and carry thing. Faith is a cash and carry mystery. You have it, you get it. You have it, you get it. If you don't have faith, you won't get it. But what people call faith is nothing but foolishness. Sir. Nothing. Because that woman heard about Jesus. Some people must have testified of the great acts of God in their life through the ministry of Jesus. She has heard, she heard about it. And that's why I'm bothered. And when I see people gisting when testimony is being read or somebody is sharing testimony, or that's the time the devil will press them to go to the toilet. And yet they are suffering. Why did you leave your house to come to the shore? Don't you have enough people to gist with? I love myself a lot. When I have an understanding of what Zion is all about, sir, I organize myself never to sit with anybody that I'm close with. Somebody can say, ah, did you see that person? No. A neutral person entirely, sir. I won't allow my title in church to make me to be distracted from my own war that will steer off faith, that will bring about the miraculous in my life, sir. Am I talking to somebody here? She heard the testimony of others, and she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I don't need for him to pay for me. I don't need for me to explain my situation to him. I don't need for him to do anything, not to lay hand on me. Not, no, not at all. Let me just, because I have this understanding that whatsoever touches the, whatever touches the anointed eh, has become anointing. And as she touched the hem of the garment, sir, the fountain of her evil flow dried up. I don't care how long you have been in that plague of Egypt. In today's enough is enough service, sir. That fountain will die. It will dry to the root. And the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified. So shall it be. God heal her. She took a step of faith. Some would rather took their own step of faith to the hospital before coming to the church. Oh, what a protective story. A woman very committed, the deputy, I mean, what is it called? HOD of one of our units in some years back. She, in, a, in their family, people die by one strange headache. They have been dying like that. In our family, all our siblings, that's the way they are. And it was our turn. We are having anointing service in the church that day. And there is nowhere to pass through to go to the hospital other than passing in front of the church. When she had that challenge in the middle of the night. And then they went early in the morning, passing through the church, going to the hospital. Nobody knew in the church. We have a bishop there. We that are minor prophets, we are there too. Uh, we, are, we are there just like that. Nobody knows us. We are just minor. You, you understand? Because some members, if it is not the bishop, they don't have faith. Now, she went for two weeks in the hospital. We didn't even know. The day she now died, put her in the mortuary. They now come and call me to come and pray. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I prayed. I prayed, nothing happened. And then, after that day, I was asked to lead a delegate of some elders and some pastor to that house to go and comfort the husband and the children and all the like. We got there. Oh, Even in the midst of their money, come and see the kind of film that they were watching. Mm-hmm. All manner of Nollywood that has no meaning. How, how you see, you come to church and receive the word and you get back home and sit down with your children, with your grandchildren and watching useless things that will neutralize the faith that you carry from church. You may be an actress or actor. That's what is giving you money. But I can't watch you because there is nothing you have to teach me 
that my the word of God cannot teach me. Not even in this wicked war. We are before they release their what is it called? Film. They go to native doctor to dedicate those things. And that's why we have so many marriages breaking today. Because the woman has watched those things so much that is beginning to suspect the husband that is just a cool-headed man. The man is suspecting the woman. All manner of things happening. And then before you know what is happening, please, I, I don't want to hear this again. And I prefer to divorce. Then what are you watching? Are you truly a child of God? What is a miracle? Miracles are the deliberate act of God triggered by the faith, desperate faith of men. You've got to be desperate with your faith, sir. Not just ordinary faith, sir. You must be what? Desperate. If it is not today, let it not happen again. It has to be what? Today. Just like enough is enough service today. If it is not today, sir, God, count me out. I must have a change of story in this service. You know, we've been announcing that people should come with their list of enough is enough to come to service today. In case you have not come, written your own, you still have ample time to do that. Desperate faith of men. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 and 12 is a good example. You know the story of the man, that paralytic man? That paralytic man? He was paralyzed. They have carried him everywhere. No solution. And this particular day came. When he entered into Capernaum, after some day, it was noise that Jesus was in the house. So, he beckoned on me, friend. If today is the last day you are going to help me, please carry me to wherever the, that house that we are hearing about. I must come out of this condition. And then when they got there, people who are going nowhere, they, don't, they are not looking for anything. They are usually at the entrance of the church, at the gate, gossiping, talking. Well, I'm warning people that used to go behind my office to go and be just in there during service. Sometimes I just go in between the service and you'll be hearing loud noise. They will just be talking, chatting up. I can't understand. Did you actually come for, to church to be blessed? If you won't come to church to be blessed, stop discouraging people with your situation. Because your, story, your situation is not changing. And you are discouraging people in your neighborhood from coming. That if Jesus in Winner's Chapel is truly good to you, we should have seen a change in your life, sir. And then the people that were at the door said, uh -uh, did you think we came to sell plantain here or granite here? We have been here since early in the morning before the day break to wait for this man and we couldn't get access to him. Go and come back the next day. The man said, well, told his friend, said, where there is a wheel, there must be what? A way. He said, look up, is there a roof there? They said there is a roof. The roof it. Another man be building, he said, open it up. If anybody asks you, tell him, after I recover, I will fix the roof back. And do you know that nobody even asked him when Jesus said, carry your bed and go. And he left. The landlord was carried away by the exploit, was carried away by that mighty testimony, because they knew the man also too. The landlord will be the one, will have been the one that eventually fixed the roof back, because he knew what has taken place in the life. How many times have you come to church and that you have gone back home with nothing to show, sir? Can you check your life? Can you re-examine your life? Can you re-examine your life? Church is not a club where you come to dance and sweat and still go back with your situation, sir. It is a spiritual service center where your life is serviced by the miracle working power of the word of God. Am I talking to somebody? What does it take to operate in the supernatural? We look at just one. Be committed to spiritual growth and development. Be committed to what? Spiritual growth and what? Development. 
even in the natural office setting, people that are made to become manager is because of the problem that they are able to solve. Am I talking? They make some people executive director. Why? Because they have gone to school. Some have gone to U.S., gone to Harvard, did MBA in Harvard, went to Oxford University, did another shortcut course like that that will enhance their delivery in their assignment. So when they came back with their certificate, in fact, some people just on LinkedIn, they just post their latest something, and people now begin to call them to employ them, to disengage them from where they are to a better place where their life can be better. That's the reason why people build up mental capacity, sir. So that when you are given a job, you won't need another person to come and be doing the work for you, sir. Yes, of course, Nigeria don't recognize merit. Hear me, if you, are mer if, you, if you merit it and it's not coming, don't give up, sir. When you get God on your side, they will look for you. When you become supernatural, in all your approach, sir, your certificate will announce you. It will announce you, sir, from nowhere. Somebody from nowhere will just suddenly remember you and remember that you went to so so school, and you did social so course, and then they are looking for you everywhere, sir. The rest is not unto the swift, neither the battle unto the mighty. On favor is not unto men of skill, but time and chance happen to every one of them. Hear me, in this kingdom, if you must compete effectively with the people of the world, and win, overcome them, and take back your right to position from them, sir, you must be empowered to operate in what? The supernatural. The supernatural. Don't blame all these politicians for any reason. If you know the price they are paying, sir. If you know some of them, they are own children. They have used them for something. Uh, you don't know? Go and ask them. And he, how can somebody use his son? For sacrifice. In order to remain relevant in politics. And you expect that person to give up on time? No, never, sir. And you that you are not ready to use your own child or your wife, and you are competing with them just with ordinary something. You don't even have anything. You don't know anything at all, sir. But hear me. I'm here to declare to you, sir. When you go the supernatural, sir, no matter what they must have used, it will fail. Because everything that they are using has an expiry date. But this one, the supernatural does not have expiry date, except you puncture the power of God that Power the supernatural in you through sin. Through sin. And that is where many people are guilty in the body of Christ today. We come to church thinking pastor will not know. Our leaders will not know. Even doors are closed. Windows are closed. Roof is covered. But heaven is not closed. God is watching from the upstairs. Everything lay bare before him, sir. And God will never allow a, a, an unjust person to just hijack a testimony just like that, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? Be committed. Now hear me, spiritual authority is only entrusted to the matured believers. We said, we said that one during the week. Matured believers. Just like you will not tempt your son of Six year old with the key of your brother Jeep, just because you have been believing God for his male child for almost 20 years after you have had some guests, and then the boy now said, Today, oh daddy, I don't need a driver, I want to drive to school by myself. Will you give him the car key? Why? Because it's that suicide. That's what you will lose what has brought joy to you. You just lose that child just like that. So also, God is not going to be, is not going to tempt you with the authority in the realm of the spirit that you don't have the ability to command. Most the reason why some pastors that used to hear about their name in those days, in the 80s, in the uh, 90s, early 2000s, the reason why you are not hearing their name again is not because they are dead. They wear a coat that is bigger than them. And so when the glory begins to come, they begin to meddle with the glory of God. And so God withdraws from them. And then 
everything about the anointing died a natural death. And you can no longer hear about them. You can no longer hear about them. Galatians 4, verse 1 to 3. You can read that. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We are told, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Government cannot rest upon the shoulder of a child. No, a child is born, but the son grows up into maturity. You grow up, you grow up, you what? You grow up, you grow up, you grow up. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't over pamper your children. I'm telling you the truth, sir. My, my daughter, some years back, after I finished from primary school, she said, I need a phone. I said, I said Dad, but don't just try it. Too. Don't just buy for me Tonosobe. You know the phone they call Tonosobe? That no care, that quenkeleme. I said, that is what thou shalt use. Because you don't have the capacity to handle all of this Android for now. And thank God they went to Covenant University where there is no access to phone. Many over pamper their children. Any little thing, you give them cartoon to watch. And you don't know that majority of the cartoon today, they are demonized. You are not any cartoon that your children will be watching. You give them your phone to be going up and down. And before they know, you know what was happening. They already know man and woman game. At a tender age. And then you are now, instead of you looking for a way to bless, to, for them to be a blessing to you. At your old age, you are now crying. Running up and down looking for deliverance for that same child. You cause it. You cause it. You cause it. You cause it. Many raise useless children using house help to pamper their own children. You are helping to raise other people's wife and other people's husband by giving them tedious work. But your son, daughter and your child cannot even cook ordinary indomie. And you want that child to make it through successfully in marriage. Builds capacity be what? Spiritual capacity. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And I, unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should ex be exalted above measure. Did you see that? Paul was exposed to too many things, too many knowledge, that even made a case of Paul, Thou art mad. Too much knowledge is making you to be mad. But God knew that if he did not put something that would make him to always remember him as God, Paul may be lost completely, sir. May be lost completely. So spirituality or spiritual maturity is not about age, but about depth in spiritual things. Depth in spiritual things. Depth in spiritual things. Depth in spiritual things. Our culture and our tradition in winners, then, if you are not spiritually sound, there is no way you can be ordained as an elder. But I think that something is changing now. Do you understand me now? Hey, people are changing, they are manipulating it. Because Papa's eye cannot be everywhere. And some pastor cannot stand the ground and say, no, 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 no. It is not a shiftless title, sir. It is a, an ordination that will make you to rise above people in church to be a solution to the problem of people, not now gossiping or fighting for something else. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, you, you, you went so cold. Uh, well, no problem anyway. It doesn't matter. Hebrews chapter 2. 5, verse 13 and 14. For everyone that you said make is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But strong me belongeth to them that are full of age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. Both. 
good and evil. That's what the word of God does for us. Now here this, how do you build up capacity? We build up spiritual capacity through tireless study of the word of God and engage, our engagement on the altar of prayer. You pray like never before. Groaning in the Holy Ghost. Now I don't care what your situation is in this service. Enough is enough. I say enough is enough. That your list that you have written, can you put it in front of you on the floor? The ground where you are seated is the holy ground. The power of the most high God that is available in Canaan land is equally available here. And whatsoever thing that is not so from the beginning that is tormenting your life and your destiny, that is making your Christian adventure to be a mockery, God, through the greatness of his power, will swallow up such things in the name of Jesus. That's your amen, I don't know. And there is no cold this morning. Or you are thinking about the fuel? No, don't think about it. We won last year, but many did not heed to our warning. But it does not even matter whether you heed unto it or not. There is an escape route for you. Are you hearing me now? Hey, it's not about how much they sell the things. Huh? It's all about you being blessed about how much they sell the things. And that is why my God, whom I serve, will show you kindness before the end of this week. Yeah. Through his kindness, your book of remembrance will be open. Yeah. If you believe, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. Hear this. Every affliction of long continuance is a manifestation of the curse of the law. The chapter 28, verse 59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness cease, and of long continuance. Did you see that? This is what God is out to address. In case the plague of your life is as a result of the causes of life by the reason of your disobedience that link you back to the sin of your forefather. Maybe you have repented before. You, have, you got born again. But all of a sudden, by error of commission or omission, you step into sin again. Anytime you commit sin, sir, what comes alive is the sin of your forefathers. You are connected to the consequences in the realm of the spirit. And it will answer in the physical. But today, an end is coming to that in the name of Jesus. Because curse costless shall not come. In Numbers 23, 20, he said, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, as it is written. Curse is everyone that angered on the, a tree, so that we can be connected to the blessing of Abraham, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Through what? Faith. Hear me. Suffering beyond a day, a while, or a moment is contrary to our redemptive rights. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Somebody is going to receive a mighty deliverance from that issue. Let your amen show it. Justify that you believe by a resounding amen. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, Establish, strengthen, and say to you, somebody will be set to today. Yeah. That amen looks so cold. Yeah. In Psalm 30, verse 5, we are told, For his anger endure but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
God is going to turn your morning to dancing today. If you believe, let your amen be the loudest. But to take delivery of our enough is enough demand, we must enter into a covenant to serve God as a new way of life. And it will give us rest round about. According to 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12 to 15. God is saying to you, all forces of hell that is out to destroy any area of your life, it is enough. And they will stay their hand right now in the name of Jesus Christ. But in conclusion, engage in violent cry of faith after the order of blind Bartimaeus. How many of you remember blind Bartimaeus? Thou son of Joseph, have mercy what? On me. Thou son of Joseph, have mercy on me. Rise up on your feet. I like for you, as you partake of the communion this morning, you are going to cry and put those things under that you have written under your feet. But before we partake of this communion, wherever you are in this sanctuary or outside, if you are not born again, Jesus is here to save you. Am I talking to somebody? If by error of commission or omission, you miss it, you need a genuine repentance so that you can be reconnected back. All less bar and all less close. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? Wherever you are. I'd like for you to, in honor of this Jesus, you want to rededicate your life, lift up your right hand to heaven and say this word of prayer after me. God bless those hands. Say this word of prayer after me. Lift it up. Let Jesus see that hand. Before we partake of this communion and before we cry the cry of faith, say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me and deliver me from the power of sin and that of the devil to serve the living God. Today, I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. Amen.